Hey guys, this is Big Vacations, and welcome to my review of Cold Harvest. Yeah, another Gary Daniels flick. Um, this time it stars Gary Daniels, of course, Gary Daniels as a dual role, actually. He plays twins. He plays twin brothers. He plays um, Roland, and he also plays um, his brother twin brother who is I think his name is some dorky name kind of um whoa come on Urr. IMDB cool uh he plays Oliver Cheney Roland and Oliver Cheney Basically what this is, like a western, in a sci-fi western basically, mixed a little bit of like Mad Max, Apocalypse type thing. And I gotta be honest, I wasn't really, you know, uh, I mean, I, I went into this with not very high expectations, turned my brain off, and I had fun. I actually like Cold Harvest, I liked it a lot actually, it was a lot of fun. Um... Good action, good martial arts. Gary Daniels kicks some ass, kicks some ass. I like the whole look he has in this film. Sort of like you know the man with no name, trying to Clint Eastwood, but like a martial arts version of Clint Eastwood. He's got the cigar, walking around, kicking ass. It's pretty cool. Um, I guess in this this future, basically what the tagline is: uh, the blackened skies of Earth's future, a wasteland where the only law is a new breed of bounty hunters. And Roland, uh, Gary Daniels is about one of the bounty hunters. We call them bounty killers. Kills kills the, the bad guys for our bounties. Um, impact with a massive comet has killed millions, and left the Earth darkened and ravaged by a disease that would eventually wipe out wipe out what is left of the human race. Now it doesn't really tell you what the plague is or what the disease is. It just basically. It's just some disease. Mankind's only hope lays in the sources. Seven people said to carry the antibody to the disease. Futuristic bounty hunter Roland and his wid widowed sister-in-law, Christine, Barbara Crampton, desperately search for the sources who are being stalked and eliminated by Little Ray, the weasel-like crime warlord with the twisted scheme of controlling the antivirus serum and, serum and, rolling the, and ruling the world. When Christine learns that she's pregnant and that her child could be one of the last remaining sources, the hunters become the hunted, and the final battle between the Hurl and the Little Ray could decide the domination for extinction of mankind. With biting post-apocalyptic reality of a boy and his dog, I don't know why they brought up a boy and his dog, over the top brutality of the road warrior, eh, okay, Cold Harvest is white hot action on the edge, edge, the edge of destruction. No, I wouldn't disagree with the white hot action thing, but it's fun action, you know, it's not, it's not world warrior, that's for sure. I haven't seen a boy and his dog, so I don't know what kind of comparison this film might have with it. Um, one thing the back of this is getting mixed up, though, is actually she doesn't know that she's pregnant until pretty much near the end of the film. Now, Gary Daniels does a pretty good job in the dual role of twin brothers, rolling the, and you know, feet first, you know, she asks questions later, bounty hunter, and he also does a good job as a nerdy, you know, quiet, you know, guy. And it's really kind of sad when you know, his, his brother basically, his brother basically gets killed by Little Ray. Brian Genesee, he, his performance is, is, you can tell he's having a lot of fun playing this bad guy role. He's over the top, but I enjoyed it. I, he just like, he, I guess he just likes the word bitch, because I think he said that like, I don't know, 10 or 12 times throughout the whole film. Um, he likes the word bitch, he likes to say bitch. Um, and basically what happens is, he's the one that actually murders, um, the fuck is his name again? Oliver. He murders Oliver, and they used to play a game as kids. I guess, Little Ray and the twins, they were friends as kids, so, you know, he used to play this game where you put, take a bullet out of the chamber, put it down on the ground, then you pick up the gun, and you try to load as quick as you can, and then shoot, you know, basically, kind of like a weird form of, you know, Russian roulette or something, but it was, a, you know, it was a sad sequence, Barbara Cranston basically sees her husband, Oliver gets shot in the head by, by, uh, Little Ray, now, Little Ray is kind of, you know, not really an intimidating name, but he does a pretty good job as a bad guy, um, he basically, Brian Genesee, um, 
this is the first time I've really heard of him, Brian Genesi. He does a good job. Like I said, he plays it. He's got this weird goatee thing he's trying to go on look. It kind of made a little bit of sort of John Travolta-ish, you know, from Broken Arrow. And you definitely do see a little bit of Broken Arrow kind of influence, especially with the score near the end of the film. It has the sort of choir in the background, you know. It works pretty well. Brian Genesi, he was in, his first appearance was in a, as a, in a TV series called The Littlest Hobo. It was in Screwballs 2. It was in something called Skin Deep, which is the one with, I think it's the one with John Ritter. Then he was in Project Shadow Chaser 2. He was in Terminal Virus. He was in Cyber, Cyber Cop 3. That was pretty bad. And before Cold Harvest, he was actually in a film called Spoiler, which is another Gary Daniels flick, which I saw recently, and I'll get into that. It's a whole other story there. Um, basically, Barbara Crampton, she delivers a right game. I thought she did a really good job of the performance as Christine Cheney. Um, she did a good job with, you know, the emotions and, you know, kind of distraught widow, basically, on the run. Um, other than that, there's a good supporting, um, basically supporting, uh, role by, I don't know what this character's name is. He plays, basically, Brian Genesi's right-hand man. I think his name is Captain Greg Medville Smith. I think that might be him. I think his name is just Captain. I think so. I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure if it's him or not. But um, he did a good job. He's kind of a crazy character. Um, it was made for like three, three million six hundred thousand dollars. It was a pretty good job, you know, um, with the whole uh, with the budget that they have. Do a good job. Um, I really don't know what else to say about the film. I know I think Jerram 707 uploaded on YouTube. It's not really, I, I mean, it's just typical by the numbers, fun action, martial arts action. Some good choreography by Gary Daniel, some good moments by, you know, from acting by Barbara Crampton. Um, there's some, you know, there's a couple moments maybe wince. Um, there's one actually where, a pretty clever way where Gary Daniels ends up being captured by Little Ray. And he's basically, he's tied up on this barbed wire fence, basically. He's kicked repeatedly by Riddle, Little Ray into the barbed wire. And they, they, they showed the barbed wire digging in his back. And it was kind of, ugh. But it had some really, truly badass moments. Some really good choreography at the end. Especially between Brian, the fight between Brian Genesi and Gary Daniels. It was kind of, there was like a moment where like he's doing this gunplay. He never runs out of bullets. And he's got like a six shooter. And I think he shoots like 20 people. It, it's kind of, you never see him reload. So you're kind of, eh, but at the same time, you know this is one of those movies. Where you turn your brain off and enjoy it for you know, what it is. It's just a fun, no brains, you know, no frills, sci-fi action here, basically, with some martial arts. Um, but I like the idea, I like the idea of the Western type thing, that in the future you have this plague and the sun's, you know, a comet hit, so the sun isn't really, it's, you know, Roland has said multiple times, I don't know if it's night or day. And you have multiple good moments. You know, you have good production design, in my opinion, creating this world on the on the cheap. And then basically, the whole plot, like I said, is pretty simple. Roland basically is basically deciding to protect Christine, and they're on the run away from they're on the run from Little Ray and his, you know, his his companion, you know, his basically his cohorts, and you know all the. You know, all the crazy, you know, shenanigans that happened in between. Not really shenanigans, but, you know, a little bit of action set pieces that built it up. Um, Roland, you know, he actually ends up getting saved by Barbara Crampton in the saloon when he got foobarred, basically. Then, he basically, he manages to get away into, find a way into Little Ray's compound by basically enlisting the help of these other, these basically scavengers, this group of scavengers that he, I guess he was friends with the leader when he was younger and he manages to get away and he uses the motorcycle does a good motorcycle stunt over the top of the fence and their base of scavengers are attacking and this is kind of setting there's a diversion for him to get in there and that's when he does the killing 20 people with two with you know six shots you know and it, it's kids blood it has some gore at least when he shoots them you see blood you see practical blood squibs which is always good and then basically he's basically trying to get 
Barbara Crampton because before she actually thought she was on you thought she was safe because the military came in people who were responsible for the source you know for the sources you know the people who have the cure and they could, they got her and thought they were going to get him get her safely to a safe zone they called the safe zone before you know little ray got to you know because they got her in a helicopter but of course little ray saw the helicopter flying over his compound and decided to shoot the fuck out of it and so they managed he met, little ray manages to capture christine so basically gary daniels decides i'm going to go out and save her and that's when you get the 20 you know six shots killing 20 people it's kind of funny the way that he there's this one shot that he does i find it kind of funny because the way he does it there's one shot where he basically he, he dives on a table, slow mo, holds the six shooter like this, and goes. Grrr. But this the way the shot is done is kind of funny. But he does an awesome martial arts move and shoots somebody. It was really cool. There's this guy shooting at him in a warehouse, and he jumps off the side of the wall, does a backflip, and shoots like this. Goes. Grrr. You know, shoot. You know, he's firing the gun while he's doing a 360 flip in the air. It, it was that was pretty cool. But like I was saying, the fight between Brian Janessi and Gary Daniels is one of the best parts. He fucks him up. There's one where he does this, you know, this high jump kick in the air, stop, you know, basically pauses in the air, kicks him with his other foot. There's another one where basically he does this one where basically he just, Brian Janessi thinks he's got him. Brian just jumps in the air, does a jump kick, he misses, and Gary Daniels just kicks the shit out of him. Sends him into a bunch of boxes, knocks his ass out. And then basically you have the final sort of confrontation which is the game that they played as kids the one that uh you know his brother ended up dying you know playing you know gary daniels decided to play and, and this time he wins because basically you know uh little ray misses he gets it loaded they get loaded you got some suspense they get it loaded right away and almost and then uh, he misses and then gary daniels shoots a hole right in his head it's practical effects, so you see the, the bullet go right through, right through Brian Jesse's head and blood and everything. So, you know, it was it was it was what I, you know it was enjoyable for what it was. It was enjoyable. I paid like a dollar for this at a pawn shop. Well worth it. Um, there were some issues, like I, don't, I mean, not very many. I mean, yeah, there were some moments where you know I guess you could consider it kind of slow, but I didn't think so. It moved pretty fast to me. Um. This is definitely a B movie. I mean, if you can't handle the, you know, some cheese, you know, with your action, I don't think you'll probably get, you know, probably won't like it too much. But I gotta be honest, I think this is one of the best, better, the best Gary Daniels films I've seen. It's not Fist of the North. It's not Fist of the North Star, but it's still pretty solid. Um, and so, you know, pretty good direction by Isaac Florentine as well. There was a score by Steve Edwards that I liked, but at the same time, there had some issues. Like, there was, like, some really bad... There was this one score that was used for Little Ray in suspense sequences. Basically, he it would just replay itself on, like, a loop every time. It's like it ran out of score, so it was like... Da -da -da! And it was kind of... Yeah. If you've ever seen the movie, you might get what I'm talking about. It's kind of like, you know, a dramatic chipmunk. You know, it just overstays its welcome after a while, and it becomes really laughable when that piece of score is used. I also forgot one of the most, one of the more badass moments of the film as well. Um, Little Ray's henchman Captain is wanting to basically he's had enough of Barbara Crampton and wants to you know burn. He wants to basically he's like screaming, "I'll shoot you!" And Gary Daniels grabs this um, he's got a pitchfork. And the guy turns around, you know, Gary Daniels, basically what Gary Daniels is, is he does is he fucking throws the pitchfork, like, fucking right in his fucking chest. It was, it was pretty gory. It's it, The pitchfork goes right through the guy's chest into the ball behind him. Blood, sp there's, a, there's like a blood, you know, spatter left behind. It was a solid effect and a solid sequence. So it brought a little, it's a pretty solid film. I mean, for what it is, it was enjoyable. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's one of the better but Gary Daniels flicks that's for sure um, I'd give it a look if you could I mean it's on YouTube you can give it a shot um, I don't know what to say um, except um, if I was going to rate Gold Harvest out of 5 stars I'd probably give it 3 3 stars I enjoyed it it was just a nice 3 star you know enjoyable film um, I had a lot of fun with it so um, yeah I liked Cold Harvest so Anyway, thanks for watching my review of Cold Harvest, and I'll check you guys later. See ya.